enrichment for our reptiles extends far more than that. With snakes and other reptiles under human care no longer having to use 100% of their time and energy budgets. Simply on survival and reproduction, providing them with environmentally complex enclosures as well as additional behavioral enrichment opportunities is important in progressing care. The Cambridge Dictionary defines enrichment as the act or process of improving the quality or power of something by adding something else. So what does that definition of enrichment have to do in regard to the lives of our animals, like snakes and other reptiles? The AZA, or Association of Zoos and Aquariums, defines enrichment as process for improving or enhancing zoo animal environments and care within the context of their inhabitants' behavioral biology and natural history. Both of these definitions are absolutely applicable to animals under human care. Welfare science, which was the topic of Liam's video, informs us that providing behavioral choices through environmental enrichment opportunities enhances the welfare of animals under captive management. This means that regardless of the setting we're keeping them in, animals in our care should have opportunities to express natural behaviors typical of their species. In order to do this, they need to have choice and control over aspects of their environment and how they behave in it. From animals in zoological institutions, rescues, and sanctuaries to those in our homes, the number of ways to provide enrichment are limited only by our imagination, creativity, and the safety of our animals. The AZA has outlined five enrichment categories. And as animal caretakers who are interested in progressing our care, it should be our goal to provide these. Those are cognitive, dietary, physical, sensory, and social. Now remember that when we say natural behaviors, that doesn't mean that the mechanisms we use to facilitate the animals performing those behaviors has to be natural. But for example, Morelia bradley like to climb. It's an innate behavior in the species. That means that we can provide them opportunities to climb in trees outside, or we could put a tree in our house for them to climb in, but we don't have to. We can provide things like artificial perching and other artificial reptile decor that provides them an opportunity to express that behavior of climbing. The behavior the innate species typical natural behavior that we are trying to make sure they're able to do is climbing. It doesn't matter what they're climbing on. I'm going to show you some enrichment examples in each of the five categories. These examples are going to be for snakes, but they can very easily apply to other reptiles. Aww. I'm going to try to show you a natural example as well as an artificial example in each of the five enrichment categories. Cognitive enrichment can be provided through training or by setting up puzzle exercises for your snake in or out of their enclosure. It's anything that's going to give your animal mental stimulation and make them think and problem solve. Dietary enrichment can be accomplished with foraging exercises to simulate hunting or by providing variety in the prey items being fed to your snake. Maybe your snake normally eats rodents, but you could occasionally offer it fish, birds, or eggs as well. Physical enrichment is anything that gets your snake moving. If your snake is a burrower, you can offer natural substrates to burrow in or just give them piles of crumpled up paper for your burrower to push through. As I said before, there are endless opportunities for climbers from taking them outside and allowing exercise in trees to providing PVC perches inside the enclosure. Is your snake a swimmer? Offer pool time via a large container filled with water within the enclosure or fill that bathtub up and let's see if your snake wants to dive in. Sensory enrichment is as easy as providing varied textures via natural items like rocks and logs or with artificial items like cardboards, plastics, fabrics, or any artificial material that is safe. You can provide temperature as enrichment separate from the normal thermal sources Scents can also provide interesting sensory input for your snake. 
You can bring in live plants, fallen leaves, grass, fruits, vegetables, or other natural substances from outside, but you can scent artificial items as well with things like essential oils. Social enrichment will depend on what species of snake you keep. Some are known to eat other snakes or even their own kind. Some snakes are known to live communally in the wild, and many snakes are somewhere in between. They're not known to eat each other, but they typically live on their own. Depending on the species, it can be stimulating for them to encounter other snakes using their vision or olfaction. So you could temporarily allow snakes to encounter each other behind protected contact or share an exercise space together if it's species appropriate and safe. You can also swap out sheds or enclosure furnishings between snakes for stimulation. In some instances, you may be able to place mixed species of reptiles together, such as one of our local zoos does with their bull snake and box turtle. Social enrichment for snakes and other reptiles can be complicated since there are so many variables and because it is dependent on the natural history of each species to do so. It's important that if you're considering this, that you consult with an animal behaviorist or someone similar before trying to do it. Hopefully this gave you some things to think about and got your own creative juices flowing so that you can come up with lots of creative ways to enrich the lives of your snake family members. Okay, I know what you all are thinking right now. She only talked about snakes. Isn't enrichment applicable to all species of animals? Well, yes, of course it is. Both active and passive enrichment are excellent for all animal species, not just snakes, and that includes lizards. We've already covered snakes, now it's time to cover lizards. It's not enough to simply eliminate the negatives of wild living. Getting rid of the negatives only makes something neutral, empty. We need to make captivity a rewarding, worthwhile experience for our pet reptiles.